What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Not gonna lie, I got a little carried away during the taste test because it was so fantastic and I forgot to film the intro sequence. So if you wanna see how this beautiful, delicious, smoky pork brisket came out, you're gonna have to wait till the end of the video. Coming up! When it comes to cooking outside, I'm a big fan of utilizing the off cuts, sometimes called butcher cuts. It's those rare cuts of meat that you're not gonna see at the grocery store all the time. And that's for a few different reasons. First and foremost, cooking the same thing all the time gets pretty boring. Not to mention, although these cuts may be hard to find, they're generally much more inexpensive than all the major cuts that we're used to buying. And it's always fun to experiment with a new piece of meat, see how it comes out. A lot of the cuts we use in barbecue today were once considered off cuts back in the meat market days, like brisket and beef ribs, for example. So that being said, today I have got a pork brisket that we're gonna cook to perfection, and it is going to be Delicious. This video is brought to you by Porter Road. If you're unfamiliar with Porter Road, they are an online butcher shop that delivers high quality pasture-raised meats right to your door. With a wide variety of pork, lamb, chicken, and dry-aged beef, they have an amazing selection of proteins. But my favorite part about Porter Road is that they don't just focus on all the mainstream cuts. They offer a lot of these off cuts, these rare cuts that you don't see in the grocery store, such as pig wings, the pork spare ribs I did a few weeks back, or the pork brisket that we're doing today. You can shop their website for individual cuts and get exactly what you want, or you can sign up for a subscription package as well and all orders over a hundred dollars ship for free so if you're in the market for some high quality pasture raised beef pork lamb you name it head over to porterroad.com by clicking the link in the description of this video to get 15 percent off your entire order that's porterroad.com link in the description 15 percent off your order and orders over a hundred dollars ship for free thank you porter road so this is a pork brisket. I've never actually seen one of these before, but I'm pretty excited to cook it. And it looks a lot like a tiny little brisket, right? You got this point meat right on top that runs down to the lean section. Still got some silver skin on the back. And it's basically the pork equivalent of a brisket. It comes from the same part, which is kind of near the picnic hand, that lower part of the shoulder, that breastbone area. This is looking pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna do any trimming on it. As far as seasoning goes, I'm gonna cook this thing just like a brisket. So we're gonna go with some good old fashioned salt and pepper. I got the old Leroy and Lewis Dalmatian here, which is two parts. 16 mesh black pepper to one part diamond crystal kosher salt and we're just gonna season this up i must say this is pretty adorable it's like a tiny little brisket i've been debating all day how i'm gonna cook this thing because like i said i've never done this before and my immediate reaction is this would be a perfect candidate for direct heat to throw on the mini chud box kind of come out like a pork steak or something like that but because it is a pork brisket i kind of want to cook it like a traditional brisket that way we can have a really accurate comparison and just see how it smokes up so that being said i think it's time to fire up the pit There's a snake in my boot. Also, this week's Patreon giveaway is gonna be one of these. Big old chuddy cowboy hats. Damn it. Onto the pit we go with our adorable little pork brisket. We're gonna go fatty side towards the fire, fat side up, just like a regular brisket. We're gonna be rocking right around 250, 275 for this cook, and we will check back in in a little bit. Three hours into this cook, and this adorable little pork brisket has hit an internal temperature of about 165, 170. So I think it's time to wrap it up. So of course, I'm gonna give it the old foil boat method. Why not, right? Feeling nice, looking good. Now that it's all wrapped up, back on the pit it goes until it gets nice and tender. After about an hour and a half in the wrap, this little pork brisket reached an internal temperature of about 205 degrees and was feeling really nice and tender with the probe. So then I opened the door and I let it rest just like this until it dropped down to an internal temperature of about 145 degrees, which is where we're at right now. Ooh, there you go, pee pee. So now I think it's time to slice in and see how this thing came out. The real benefits of having a dog on set. Thank you. So as you can see in the world's most adorable foil boat here, we've got that crunchy bark. It really looks like a microscopic brisket. Feeling nice and tender, but smelling oh so porky. Crunchy bark and the other real great benefit of the foil boat is we've got all this, I almost just said tallow, but we got all this lard that's rendered out from the whole cooking process ever since it's been wrapped. So we're gonna just dump that right on top and what that's gonna do is give us a really nice presentation. That wet cutting board and make sure everything Thing is looking its very best. So, without further ado, I think it's time to slice right on in. Let's start with the classic bisect, right where the point meat meets the flat meat. 
Looks just like a brisket. Point meat on top, good smoke ring, deckel fat right through there, well rendered. As for this flat meat, let's do a couple center cuts real quick. It's so cute. Little pork brisket slice. Pulls right apart just like a regular brisket. And it cooked in maybe a third of the amount of time. So let's give this a little taste test real quick. Good bark on there too. Mm. Oh wow. That is fantastic. It's just so bizarre, you know, it looks like a brisket, smells like a brisket, but it's porky instead of beefy. I thought it was gonna be a lot more reminiscent of ribs or something like that, but it's got that very same mouthfeel. You can see just the way it breaks on the grain like that. Very good. Mm. All right, let's see how this fatty side looks. This one does not feel nearly as juicy as a fatty brisket, but let's get that little burn end slice out of the way here. Talk about pork burn ends. Does it get more legitimate than that? Feeling tender. Again, it doesn't have that gelatinous tenderness that a brisket does because there's not nearly as much connective tissue in there, but mm, whoa, that is a flavor I've never experienced before. Perfectly salty, nice and juicy. I don't know, there's something so familiar yet so unique about it. Next time I'll probably trim this uh, little pork mohawk down a little bit, but that's what the fatty side looks like. Pretty tasty. Again, nice and tender. And there's a lot of experiments I wanna do with this, you know, like try the overnight rest on there, try spritzing it, try throwing it on the direct pit. If I was gonna do another one, I would definitely trim the top part of this off. You know, we're always talking about trimming the, the brisket because otherwise these top parts are gonna be really thin and burn up and you can see how it's like smokering all the way through. That's fully toasted. But if it was like that, like a normal brisket, this would be a really good slice. Not gonna lie, this is the first time that the lean section has really outshined the fatty section. And I think that's just because it has a better fat cap on it. It's almost got a sweetness to it. Oh, it's so good. Definitely doing this again, unless y'all buy Porter Road out of all of their pork briskets. Yep, I'd call that a successful experiment. Yoink. <laughs> All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic pork brisket. As I mentioned, this is my first time playing with this cut, and I was very impressed with how well it came out, and I want to do it again. There's a lot of other experiments I'd love to try. I think a paper-wrapped brisket would be really well. I think the overnight rest might help out a lot, maybe throwing some extra lard into a wrap. Who knows? And if there was ever a cut for pork strami, I think we just found it. So, that being said, if you want to see any of that stuff, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud. And don't forget, this week we're gonna be giving away one of those big old cowboy hats with my logo on it. So be sure to sign up for that. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.